The accused will speak now. The men of Athens, how you have been affected by my accusers, I cannot tell. I know they almost made me forget who I am. Of the many falsehoods told by them, one amazed me, saying that you should be on guard against my eloquence. If by eloquence they mean truth, then I'm eloquent. But I am an old man appearing in a court of law for the first time. So please think only of the truth of my words, not their awkwardness. Can Eutus and his associates are dangerous to me. But far more dangerous to me are the others, the ones who began accusing me when you were children and long ago took possession of your minds with their lies. They claim I'm a student of natural science and refer to a comedy by Aristophanes in which a man called Socrates talks nonsense, or they liken me to those who teach for money and instruct on in how to make the worst cause appear the better. If you have ever heard me hold forth on these matters, I ask you to speak out now. A friend of mine, who most of you knew, Caraphon, once went to the Oracle at Delphi. Scythian prophetess, who speaks with the tongue of Apollo, is any man wiser than Socrates? Priestess, No man is wiser than Socrates. No man is wiser than Socrates. No man is wiser than Socrates. When I heard that, I asked myself, what can the God mean? For I know I have no wisdom, yet can gods lie? I thought, if I can find a man wiser than myself, surely no great task, then the oracle is mistaken. So I went to a politician with a reputation for wisdom. But when I spoke with him, I could not help thinking that he wasn't really wise at all, no matter what people said. I tried to explain that to him, but he became irritated with me. I thought, well... Neither of us knows anything really beautiful or profound, but at least I am better off than this fellow, because he knows nothing and thinks he knows everything, while I know I know nothing. So I went from one person to another in search of a wise man. This inquiry man of Athens has made me many enemies, but it has led me to believe that only the gods are wise. And the oracle used my name by way of illustration. What he meant is he is wisest who, like Socrates, knows that his wisdom is worth nothing. And what my enemies will never admit is that they're really angry because their pretense of knowledge has been shown up. Miletus, you good man and true lover of your country, right. Let me ask you a question. You think much about the improvement of you. I do. Tell the jurors then, who are the improvers of youth? You must know, since you've taken the pains to discover their corrupter. The laws improve youth. But who knows the laws? The jurors. They're able to instruct and improve you? They are. All of them or her only son? All of them. By Hera, that's good news. There are plenty of improvers. How about the people watching the trial today? They are also improvers. And the members of the Athenian Assembly, do they improve or corrupt? Improve. Evidently, every Athenian improves and elevates youth while I alone corrupt them. Is that what you affirm? 
I strongly affirm that you are their corrupter. What about horses, Miletus? Takes an expert trainer to bring out the best in a horse, yet you claim an entire city can train our youths while only I corrupt them. This is the word playing of a sophist. As to the other part of your indictment, you say that I refuse to recognize the gods of the state. Does this mean that I do not believe in gods at all? That I'm an atheist? I assure you, jurors, he believes in no gods whatsoever. Yet your charge also claims that I'm guilty of introducing new divinities of my own. You claim that I'm guilty both of believing in gods and not believing in gods. Can a man believe in human affairs and not humans, or horsemanship and not horses, or flute playing and not flute players? <laughs> sure, you just <laughs> I've said enough in answering Miletus's charges. Yet I know too well the enmities I have incurred, and these will be my destruction. Not Miletus or Anutus. But men of Athens know this. No greater good has happened to the state than my service to the god. For I do nothing but to go about persuading each of you, old and young alike, not to take thought about your person or property, but first to take care about the improvement of your soul. Think of the state as of a great horse, <laughs> slow to move because of its size. I am the gadfly sent by the gods to sting the horse into action. All day long, in all places, I am fastening upon you, arousing, persuading, and reproaching you. And for this service, I have never sought payment from any of you. I have sufficient witness to the truth of that. My poverty. Well, then, men of Athens, this is my defense. Perhaps there are some who expect me to bring my wife and children to pray and entreat and sob before you, as is so often done in our trials. But I feel that to do this would bring dishonor to me and you and the state. There's something wrong in asking a favor of a juror, for his duty is not to make a present of justice, but to deliver judgment. And this judgment is to be given not according to his pleasure, but according to the law. And so, to you and to the gods, I commit my cause to be determined by you as is best for me and for you. This is the time to cast your vote for guilt or acquittal. For those serving for the first time, the pierced disc stands for guilt. A solid one for innocence. A simple majority of the 501 votes cast is sufficient for conviction or acquittal. We will begin the vote now. Do you have a tally? I do. Do you swear it is true and accurate? I so swear. What is the count? Against Socrates, 263. For Socrates, 234. Four abstentions. Socrates, son of Sophronicus. You stand convicted. The vote is available for inspection. The penalty requested is death. At this time, the convicted has the opportunity to suggest an alternate penalty. The actual penalty will be determined by another vote. There are many reasons, men of Athens, why I am not grieved at the vote. I expected it. I am surprised it was so close. Had about 30 votes gone over to the other side, I would have been acquitted. My accusers propose death as a penalty. And what shall I propose, men of Athens? What would be a suitable return to a poor man who is your benefactor and who desires leisure so that he can instruct you? 
There can be no reward more fitting than meals and a pension. A reward he deserves far more than the citizen who's won a chariot race at the Olympia. Right. Let the man show.